Today, I will show you an action, adventure, fantasy film from 2014, titled Hercules. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. In 358 BC, on the Macedonian coast in northern Greece, storyteller Iolas of Athens has been captured by pirates and is trying to buy time by telling them the legend of his uncle Hercules. His father was Zeus, king of the gods, but his mother was Alcmene, a mortal woman. Zeus, queen. Hera saw the bastard these two had together as an insult and tried to kill him, but Hercules took after his father and was almost unbeatable. Once he reached manhood, the gods commanded him to perform twelve labors, and if he could complete them all and survive, Hera would let him live in peace. He fought powerful monsters like the Hydra, the Arimathean boar, and the Nemean lion, whose hide was so tough no weapon could penetrate it, so Hercules beat it with his bare hands. The pirates aren't impressed by Iola's story, not believing a word of what he says. But at that moment, Hercules arrives to rescue him, wearing the lion's hide on his head. The pirates aren't scared because there are 40 of them, but numbers are pointless. Hercules can fight with multiple men at the same time, and besides, he isn't alone. His team has come with him. There's the seer Amphiaros of Argos, the thief Autolycus of Sparta, the feral warrior Tydeus of Thebes, and the Amazon archer Atlanta of Scythia. Together, this group of mercenaries easily defeats the pirates and rescues Iolas. After counting the heads for which they will be paid, Autolycus tells Iolas he must exaggerate. The story of Hercules more so people will believe it, while Amphiaros receives a vision from the flames, they say a lion and a crow will form a strange alliance and fight across a sea of bodies. Sometime later, the party goes to a tavern to celebrate their victory. Hercules tells Autolycus about wanting to leave for the lands beyond the seas so he can finally find peace taking Tydeus with him because he is the only one that can control his rage. Suddenly, the tavern falls silent when a group of soldiers enter the place and bring with them Princess Eugenia of Thrace, who asks Hercules and his team to join her at the palace to hear her father's proposal, promising a hefty payment in gold. Iolas notices the guard shields have a raven on them. And since Hercules' symbol is a lion, this would match Amphiro's prophecy. When they arrive at the palace, Hercules can't help seeing a large group of refugees behind the walls. They're welcomed by General Sitticles, leader of the Thracian army, who doesn't look very happy about Hercules' presence, and Eugenia's son Arius, who is a big fan of him and knows all his stories. As they climb the stairs on their way inside, Hercules remembers an incident three years ago, when he killed a Hydra, which was just a bunch of men wearing lizard-like helmets. For King Eurystheus of Athens, who declares him a hero in front of a huge crowd chanting his name. The memory suddenly turns sour when it flashes images of his wife and kids getting murdered. And Hercules tries his best to ignore it and concentrate on the present. The party meets with Lord Codes, King of Thrace, who teases Amphiaros for not being able to see much of the future except his own death and judges Atlanta's skills based on her gender, but she proves him wrong pretty quickly by shooting the helmets off the guards' hands. He invites them to have dinner with them and explains their troubles, the country is in the middle of a civil war with a bloodthirsty warlord called Rhesus, who is believed to have an army of centaurs. Cotes shows Hercules all the refugees that arrive every day after Rhesus burns their villages and comments on the fact he's lost most of his soldiers and his current army is formed by farmers. Between him and his daughter, they give Hercules a speech about bringing peace to the country that helps convince him to accept the job. The following day, Hercules and his team begin training the farmers turn soldiers, starting by testing their shield wall, which doesn't hold well. Some hours later, Hercules meets with Cotes again, who has information about Rhesus thanks to one of his scouts, Phineas. The tyrant will be attacking the Bessie tribe in central Thrace within six days. And Cotes wants to take the chance to march and stop him there before he goes any farther. Hercules disapproves of the idea, 
pointing out the army needs more time to train. But Cody's doesn't listen and tells him to get ready because they'll be marching the next day. Later in the evening, after helping Atlanta get rid of Cynical's unwanted attention, Hercules notices Arius sneaking around to see Tidius sleeping chained to a chariot and almost hurting him when he comes closer. Hercules takes the kid out of there and explains that Tidius was born in war and when he found him, he was more animal than human. He saw something that traumatized him so deeply that he now never speaks at all and relives his trauma every night. But Hercules still considers him his most loyal warrior. Afterward, he takes the Arius back to Regenia, who is working at the hospice after they lost so many physicians, she taught herself the art of healing to be able to help in some way. Before leaving, Hercules gifts Arius the Nemean lion's tooth, implying it should have been a gift for his own children. The next day, the army gets ready to march and Hercules finds Iolas hidden among the soldiers intending to fight too. He reminds him he's a storyteller and not a warrior before sending him to the chariot with Cody's, and together, they all leave for Bessie. When they make it to the village. However, they discover it is too late, Rhesus had already been there and destroyed it all. And the sea of bodies matches Amphiaro's vision. Something is strange though, while some of the Bodies have been clearly rotting for days, there are others on the ground that are still fresh. These bodies are the ones that suddenly wake up and attack them because this has been a trap all along. Thinking the Bessie tribe is under the control of Rhesus, Hercules calls for a shield wall to form around Cody's while he and his team fight. The tribe leader wants to challenge him directly, so to create an illusion Iolas can take advantage of with his storytelling, Hercules smoothly breaks the tip of one of Atlanta's arrows, and when the tribe leader comes closer, he stabs him on the forehead with it, making it seem as if he had killed him with just a punch. The army finds this incredibly inspiring and makes them believe the gods are on their side. The real battle begins then. Hercules' team kills as many tribesmen as possible, but there are two many of them, and they soon breach the shield wall. They come up with a simple plan, Hercules. And Amphiaros retreat their chariots and start driving them in circles around the shield wall, pushing and killing the tribesmen out of the way. The remaining soldiers use this chance to charge. But the tribesmen recognize a defeat when they see it and run away. Rhesus is nowhere in sight. Although a strangely shaped figure can be seen watching from afar, Hercules tells Cody's that losing half his army is as much his fault as it is Rhesus because he did warn him about the farmers not being ready to write yet, and Cody's accepts giving him more time to spend training. Meanwhile, General Sidicles wants to kill Phineas for having guided them into a trap, but Atalica stops him and announces he'll be in charge of scouts from now on, although he does threaten Phineas and warns him not to make another mistake. Moments later, Princess Eugenia arrives with the healers. And she's taken to Hercules' private tent so nobody can see he's bleeding like a mere mortal. From an injury he got during battle. After she leaves him to rest, Hercules dreams of an old memory, it shows the bodies of his wife and children, his hands covered with blood. And King Eurystheus exiling him out of the country instead of executing him so he can forever live with the guilt of having killed his family. He wakes up from this nightmare. When he hears some children giggling, and when he enters the forest to investigate, he finds his dead family among the bodies of the tribesmen. Eating them is a three-headed dog, Cerberus. And Hercules gets ready to fight it, but Tydeus appears behind him and brings him back to reality, making him realize he's been imagining things. In the morning, Amphiaros immediately knows what's happened to him because it's not the first time, and he advises Hercules he needs to finish this final labor and confront the beast to find peace. But Hercules thinks he's just going mad. While the two men are busy talking by themselves, Princess Eugenia approaches the rest of the team to get the truth behind the rumors. 
They explained to her that nobody knows the truth, they found Hercules. One day alone with the bodies of his family surrounding him, but he remembers nothing. In each of his adventures, he would find one of the members of his team and show compassion for them, earning their loyalty. He was so good at what he did, nobody could believe he could be mortal. And the team simply decided to play along the stories to help them get jobs. They think that what happened to him was probably the blood rage, a common affliction that clouds the minds of warriors. From then on, Hercules and the team put Cody's army under a very strict training routine. They're given armor and weapons that copy Hercules and taught the arts of the lance. Bow and arrow, sword, hand-to-hand -hand combat, and eventually, they managed to form a shield wall that Tidius can't break. All the while, Iolos watches from a hidden spot, training along in secret. 1. Day, Phineas comes back with new intel, Rhesus is near Mount Asticus, with an army of centaurs. And Hercules wants to fight him there, before he advances farther into their territory. It may be dangerous because the forest can slow down the chariots, but he has a plan. Amphiaros sadly can't help by telling them if they win or not since he can't see that. But he does know he's going to die in a week. Some days later, once the army is ready to fight, they arrive at Mount Asticus, yet find no enemy camp. The enemy is there though. Rhesus' army appears on the horizon and as they come closer, they discover they aren't centaurs. Just a group of men on horses, creating an optical illusion by staying against the sun. Rhesus comes to talk to Cody's with Phineas by his side, who has actually been working for the enemy all along. Cody's is asked to surrender, but he refuses, and both sides get ready to engage in battle. Cody's army puts up the shield wall and releases the flanks, but the first ones to attack are actually Atlanta and her archers, who suddenly appear on chariots from the forest ambushing the enemy when they almost reach their side. When arrows on fire are shot, Amphiaros opens his arms, ready to accept his fate, but somehow not a single one manages to hit him. The battle is long and arduous Rhesus' army may be bigger, but Hercules' soldiers have a better formation. And soon they are overpowering the enemy. Rhesus' soldiers begin running away, but he decides to stay and challenge Hercules directly, which proves to be a bad idea, Hercules easily grabs his horse and throws both of them to the floor with one swift movement. Sometime later, when they return to the palace with Rhesus in chains, Cody's begins humiliating him in front of his people. But Hercules takes pity on him and helps him keep going. As they walk together, Rhesus tries to explain to him that Cody's is actually a tyrant and it wasn't his men who burned all those villages. It was Cody's. During the celebratory banquet, Rhesus is chained to two columns to be displayed as a trophy, and Princess Aerogenia tries to bring him water, but Cody's won't allow it. Then it's time for his coronation, because now that Thrace isn't divided anymore, Cody's is the king of it all. When Princess Ergenia leaves the room after Rhesus calls out Cody's again, Hercules gets suspicious and follows her, demanding her to share what she knows. She admits Rhesus is saying, the truth, it was Cody's who started this war after he poisoned her husband, the actual king, to take his place. However, she didn't play along because she approves of her father's actions. She did it because Cody's threatened to kill her child if she tried to rebel. Virginia tries to convince Hercules to take Arius with him when they leave, but Hercules refuses. Right before they're found by General Sitticles, who tells him Cody's is looking for him. Hercules goes to confront Cody's, calling him out for betraying him, but Cody's finds it laughable that mercenaries that will do anything for gold have suddenly grown a conscience. He admits wanting to have his own empire and invites Hercules to lead his army, but since he turns the offer down, he pays him and his team what they agreed on before kicking them out. When they reach their chariots, Hercules gives his money to Autolycus because he wants to stay and save Thrace. He doesn't expect the team to stay with him and allows them all to leave with their reward and have a good life. 
but Atlanta reminds him they don't follow him because they feel they owe him anything. They follow him because they are a family. The whole team decides to stay and fight except for Autolycus, who leaves with all the gold after calling them crazy. The party easily sneaks back into the palace, but General Sidicles is waiting for them and surrounds them with his soldiers. After making them drop their weapons, he also tells Cody that he's heard Urgenia conspiring with Hercules to take Arius away from him. Codys takes the kid from Urgenia as she is captured by the soldiers, and Arius tries to go to Hercules for help, secretly giving him back the lions. Tooth before Codys drags him back by the hair. Hercules is knocked unconscious while trying to save the child and he wakes a few hours later, chained to a wall and seeing Cerberus in front of him. As his vision slowly clears, he realizes it's actually three wolves, and they look familiar to him. They belong to King Eurystheus, who is now entering the area together with Codys, because they've been working together all this time to rule the entirety of Greece together. After seeing all his friends locked in cages around him, Hercules slowly recovers his memory, Cerberus has always been an illusion of his mind, what he saw that night three years ago were the wolves who attacked his family after Eurystheus put a sedative in his drink so he couldn't do anything. Eurystheus admits this is true, and he did it because he hadn't liked the way his people had called out Hercules' name louder than his as if he was some sort of god this could be a threat to his power, and he had to be eliminated. A man with ambition can be bought, but someone like Hercules who wants nothing, is too dangerous. Codys makes his soldiers take Urgenia out of her cage to be executed, and Hercules feels useless for only being able to watch. However, when Amphi arose, reminds him they all believe in him and he should believe in himself too, Hercules remembers who he is and summons all his strength to rip off the chains from the wall and go save Urgenia. Cody's and the others rush out of the room and let the wolves take care of him while Urgenia uses the axe she was about to be executed with to open the doors to the cages. The wolves give Hercules quite a fight, biting him and wounding him on various parts of his body, but one by one. Hercules manages to overpower them and throw them away, stabbing the last one with the lion's tooth. His final labor is finally complete. Virginia frees the whole party, and they grab some weapons. The soldiers left behind, while Hercules shows his strength again by lifting a metal door that allows them to escape the dungeon. As they make their way upstairs, soldiers keep trying to stop them. But they have no issues fighting back and making their way through. When a lance on fire is thrown at them, Amphiros once again thinks his time has come and opens his arms to receive his fate. But Hercules grabs it and kills a soldier with it, saving his old friend. While the party takes care of the remaining soldiers, Hercules goes after Eurystheus, who starts making a bunch of excuses for what happened to Hercules' family, like saying he had been controlled by Codys. He also tries to order him around as a king and even offers him money, but Hercules doesn't care about any of that. He grabs Eurystheus by his neck, throws him on the throne, and stabs him with his own dagger, finally getting revenge for his family. Now he can move on and find peace after all this is over. His thoughts are suddenly interrupted by a whip around his neck, it's Sidicles, who throws Hercules on the floor and gets ready to kill him only for him to end up stabbed instead. When Iolas catches by surprise from behind, after finally calling his nephew a warrior, the two of them rejoin the party, which has rescued Rhesus, and together they leave the palace, freezing as soon as they see Cody's waiting for them with his army. Arius is being held by a soldier as a hostage, and Cody's threatens to kill him if Hercules doesn't surrender. All of a sudden, the soldier falls dead because of a knife thrown at him. It's Autolycus, who has come back to help. Now free, Arius runs towards his mother as another battle begins, and Tydeus jumps in to protect him from the incoming arrows. Arius safely joins them, and Tydeus manages to kill most of the archers, but also is hit with a bunch of arrows in return. 
while the others knock over the braziers to create a wall of fire between them and Cody's army. Hercules picks up Tydeus and watches him die after he says the only word he's ever spoken. In his life, Hercules' name. Cody's army starts charging after most of the flames have died down. And Hercules sees only one way to stop him, using his extraordinary strength once again. He pushes a giant statue of Hera off its base, which breaks into hundreds of pieces that proceed to crush many soldiers and push Cody's into the abyss. With their king dead, one by one the soldiers begin kneeling for Hercules and chanting his name, accepting him as their new leader.